welcome independent researchers, skeptics, and all of humankind, shadow citizens. Shadow Citizen will explore the shadows of an alternate reality. Your hosts, Rachel L. McIntosh. Recently, I guess over the past nine months, I've become very aware that something's happening with our weather. Um, to the point where I got my, water, my rainwater tested. Uh, the rainwater test came back that I had barium, strontium, aluminum, and sulfur in my rainwater. Um, I, all I did is I put out some uh, Pyrex casserole pan in my yard and just sent it into the lab. And I, I was like, how does that even happen? So that kind of sent me down a rabbit hole, a really big one. Because <laughs> once you get online and you start researching this stuff, a lot of the stuff comes and it's really scary. Some of it's like designed to be scary. Some of it's realistic, but it's not produced very well. Um, so I ended up finding out Rhode Island, where we live, has a bill. It's now currently in committee about geoengineering. I was like, that's pretty cool. I didn't know anything about it. I talked to a lot of people. I had a radio show called Shadow Citizen. And I ended up talking to many more people than I thought I would about geoengineering. One of the guests on my show was the woman that's joining us tonight. She came up from the Washington, <coughs> D.C. area. Um, her name is Jolie Dawn. She's from an organization called Zero Geoengineering. Um, she's going to talk to us about the history of geoengineering, what currently is happening with geoengineering, and the legislation, or lack thereof, for geoengineering. And I'd like to introduce you to her. She's a fabulous person. She's a wealth of knowledge. And she's been doing this specifically for this bill for the past three years of her life. And before that, she was even years before that that she committed herself to doing this. And I really respect her. So I'd like everybody to pay attention to what she's telling us tonight. And thank you for joining us. Jolie, it's all you. Rachel, I'm so delighted to be here um, and talk about weather modification and geoengineering. Uh, it's a topic that is pretty new to people, but how many people here know about GMOs? Everybody. Okay, so when you're thinking about GM, GMOs, you can think about geoengineering, because it's simply the engineering paradigm that has come over into our weather and our climate. And what we have now is climate engineering and weather modification. So Rachel was kind enough to get uh, her water tested and her rainwater tested. And we also have Debbie Jennings here. She also got her rainwater tested. So we have her test as well. Um, and so that's kind of the beginning. Um, we start out with, why are there geoengineering footprints in our rain? And what we have here is what Rachel said, the aluminum, barium, strontium, and sulfur. These are signature agents for aerosols or geoengineering aerosols. And there are patents for them, which are on our Zero Geoengineering website. Um, so basically, what we're doing is we started measuring rainwater, not just in Rhode Island, but all around the country. And what we can see here is a pretty clear footprint, I don't know if everyone can see, but we have 6.5 aluminum, 0.5 barium, 0.9 strontium, and 155 sulfur. This is parts per billion. Okay, and so our attitude is there should be zero geoengineering contaminants in our rain. Okay, and so that's why we started doing the measurements, because it's very important to stick with the science. And the facts. And so over 50 tests so far around the country and internationally, we had a test from Korea, South Korea, Hungary, uh, we just got some tests back from Australia, and everything 100% has showed up with geoengineering footprints. So this is, um, you know, the science that we begin with. But starting with geoengineering, we have to go back to the history and this is 1961, President Kennedy, 
And he was saying, we propose further cooperative efforts between all nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. And so this is 1961 at the, um, at the speech of the United Nations. Um, and so that's very important because this kind of gives us the framework of where we're starting from. It didn't just start like, you know, last month. And in the speech that President Kennedy gave, he also wanted to ban atmospheric testing. And so that, at the time, atmospheric testing is sort of the same thing that we're talking about here, kind of uh, interventions in the weather and, and uh, doing experiments with the weather. So we continue to the great Claiborne Pell from Rhode Island. And so it's very fitting that Rhode Island is the first state with a bill to ban geoengineering. And Senator Pell said that the United States and other world powers should outlaw tampering with the weather for use as war weapon. And it was an editorial in the Providence Journal in 1975. And he says the U.S. and other world powers should sign a treaty to outlaw the tampering with weather as an instrument of war. We need a treaty now to prevent such actions before the military leaders of the world start directing storms, manipulating climates, and inducing earthquakes against their enemies. So we have to remember that these programs are primarily military driven. And this is where the research has been and the money has been spent for decades and decades. This is not a new thing. This is a very famous report written in 1996. It's called Weather as a Force Multiplier, Owning the Weather in 2025. And the Air Force was giving, this was a report, and it was talking about how to manipulate the weather and why this is such an important thing for the military to have. So, um, so that's where we're starting from before 1996. And so here we are, we're going to define geoengineering. And this is the definition that's in the Rhode Island document, H6011. Um, and the definition is geoengineering is defined as the intentional manipulation of the environment involving nuclear, biological, chemical, electromagnetic, and or other physical agent activities that affect changes to Earth's atmosphere and the surface. Now what I want you to pay close attention to is the electromagnetic angle. Because in the geoengineering technology, the use of radars and ionization is central to the technology. So when we're seeing aviation and we're seeing pollution emissions from aviation, that's just part of geoengineering. The other part is the radar, and that's why we put electromagnetic and our other physical agent activities in the bill because we wanted to make sure to nail down that kind of pollution. Okay, this is an article from 2008 from Scientific American. And the whole idea is adding sulfur to the stratosphere in this uh, article. And um, this is geoengineering. So you can see here the deployment by plane. That's the one we're talking about. It says, running on dirty, high sulfur fuel at cruising altitudes, airplanes could add plenty of SO2 to the stratosphere. Okay, SO2 is sulfur dioxide, and that's what we found in, our, in all our tests. Now, in this article in 2008, they lay out the downsides of geoengineering in this article. So the, the science, they've known for a long time that this is dangerous. But the downsides from 2008 article, they're saying unpredictable changes in regional wind and rainfall patterns, reduced evaporation leading to re reduction in global rainfall, i.e. drought, increasing acid rain, possibly polluting pristine ecosystems, accelerated destruction of the ozone, causing higher incidence of cancer. And that's not what I wanted to do, but I'm going to come back here. And okay. And then, so finally, G 
cheap enough to be done unilaterally without international agreements, which could increase global tensions, and continual maintenance required. Continual maintenance means adding tons more pollution, the sulfur. They want to block the sun. They have these ideas about the Earth and the planet. They want to block the sun as an experiment. So the scientific community has long established that geoengineering activities are harmful to the environment and people. And that was 2008. Now, here, just so that you know, the EPA has already determined that sulfur dioxide is harmful. What are the harmful effects, according to EPA? It can affect both health and the environment. Um, the health effects, short-term exposures, can harm the human respiratory system and make breathing difficult. Children, the elderly, and those who suffer from asthma are particularly sensitive to the effects of SO2. Uh, SO2 emissions that lead to high concentrations of SO2 in the air generally also lead to the formation of other sulfur oxides. So we're talking massive toxic pollution. SOx can react with other compounds in the atmosphere to form small particles. These particles contribute to particulate matter pollution. Particles may penetrate deeply into sensitive parts of the lungs and cause additional health problems. And then what are the environmental effects? At high concentrations, gases, SOx can harm trees and plants by damaging foliage and decreasing growth. And SO2 and other sulfur oxides can contribute to acid rain which can harm sensitive ecosystems. Um, so that's already determined. We know sulfur dioxide is bad. It shouldn't be in the atmosphere. And in fact, all 50 states took sulfur dioxide out of diesel fuel in 2010 because it causes acid rain and because it causes asthma in children. So we already know that. That's already determined. OK, so here's our reference point. The United States Congress held hearings November 8th to expand and finance geoengineering. Okay, and they held hearings. Uh, no public, none of the public was invited. It was the Subcommittee on Environment and Subcommittee on Energy Hearing, Geoengineering Innovation, Research, and Technology. Now, the chairman of the committee, Lamar Smith, um, had this to say. He said, Some have questioned the unintended consequences of geoengineering. One concern is that brightening clouds could offer, alter rain patterns, making it rain more in some places or less in others. Such technologies could drastically reduce global temperatures in the future by spraying aerosols into the atmosphere to reflect sunlight. While we're not sure this is plausible, some scientists believe it could achieve substantial environmental benefits at a cheaper cost than regulations. So again, they're really trying to avoid regulations. Why? because it wouldn't be legal in any of the states. And so far, Rhode Island is the only state to stand up and say, absolutely not, and we're going to fine you for it. So um, if you looked at the sky, you'd have seen these lingering aerosols. And we don't, we don't have a debate on, on is it a contrail. Um, the nature of the aerosols is that they linger, and they're engineered especially that way. And the contaminants in the metals are used particularly because that's what the radar is using. They need the metals in the atmosphere, and that way the atmosphere is more conductive. Okay? And we all need to do our detoxing and get those metals out of our body because if the atmosphere is conductive, then so are we. And that's what we need to do is really get healthy and focus on what we can do for detoxing. Okay, and then this is the um, lab test that Debbie just did. Um, we went to this lab because they specialize in sulfur dioxide. And you can see that the reading here and for the sulfur is 210. And then that's 210 parts per million. Now, these aren't the highest readings we've seen. The highest readings we've seen are in Illinois, where they had 10,000 aluminum and 19,000 sulfur dioxide. It's absolutely horrific. Okay, this is another test that we did last year. This was in uh, April. We found 3, 303 sulfur, 2.2 uh, strontium, 2.2 barium, and 10.1 aluminum. So these are the key ingredients in the signature compounds in geoengineering, and we're finding it. Who tested time. that one? It's from North Province. Um, uh, let's see. I what think was that mine? was Andy. That was like from 
There was this one year, I think yours was the Greenwich. No, mine's East Greenwich, but I mean the company. Oh, yours was McCampbell. McCampbell. Yeah, well, you, no, 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 no. no. Debbie's was McCampbell. Yeah, because they have different parameters. Mm -hmm. That's Debbie's why I don't show up with the aluminum, because like Rachel said, has it at 0.5. Um, at least your strontium and worse. Yeah. 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 They they do they specialize more in the sulfur dioxide at McCampbell, and the one we contract the most is this one, the the basic lab. This is North Providence last year in April, and I think that was our, our friend Andy who did that one. Mm -hmm. um, this is North Providence in, in March. Okay, I think I took this one when I was up here. Yeah, I took this one when I was up here last year when we introduced the bill, and we just had to get a lab sample. And you can see there's 50 aluminum here, 2.6 barium, 3.6 strontium, and 168 sulfur. Can I ask a question? Sure. What's, like, obviously none of this should be in the water, but what are these other numbers, the ML, MPL? Okay, this is the method detection limit. Okay. So this would be, this would be 1.5, um, over the method, this is the 1.5 of the method detection limit. So that's over here. They have the, All the, stuff the over thing there. down yeah. here okay. on the bottom here. Right. Okay, see, um, and that's over the method detection limit. Um, we have another, okay, and so that was, that's four tests that we have from Rhode Island. They all say geoengineering footprints are here. And so this is what. You know, I love Rhode Island. Rhode Island is my new home, my new favorite state, because it's the only state so far that has introduced a substantial regulatory bill, and it's called the Geoengineering Act, and it would be the establishment of Rhode Island state procedures to regulate, license, or prohibit the intentional manipulation of the environment through geoengineering. And imagine if we had just did it when Senator Pell wanted us to do it back in the 70s, you know? Um, so here we are, and um, again, we're just going to reference source materials. So this is a Harvard Magazine article from 2013. David Keith is actually one of the big proponents of promoting geoengineering, and so this was his article. And so you can see over here, sulfate particles are intended to be left by airplanes and um, he does a good job of explaining what it is here. It says, um, one suggestion inspired by sulfur spewing volcanoes involves modifying a fleet of jets to spray sulfates into the stratosphere where they would combine with water vapor to form aerosols. Dispersed by winds, these particles would cover the globe with a haze that would reflect roughly 1% of solar radiation away from Earth. And so if you saw the sky today, you saw that haze that was intended, um, and that's what they call solar radiation management. Um, this is a patent um, combustible compositions for generating aerosols, particularly suitable for cloud modification and weather control and aerosolization process. And this is a 1977 patent. Um, let's see if we can pull this up. Um, a combustible composition for generating aerosols for the control of modification of weather conditions consisting of a readily oxidizable substance selected from the group containing aluminum, magnesium, alkali metals, and alkaline earth metals, that would be your barium and strontium, and an oxidizing agent selected from the groups consisting of sulfur and sulfur yielding compounds, and organic and inorganic nitrates, alkali metal and ammonium chlorates, and it goes on and on. And so this is kind of the science that this is all built upon. It's all just science. And then um, I have this um, up on the zero geoengineering site. If you just type in patents, then you can pull up the patents, and this is one of them. We have dozens. Um, OK, so this is the Rhode Island bill. Uh, Yay! Yeah. Okay, because this bill is literally giving the rest of the nation and international community hope. We're using this bill as a model and a template when we go to different states, and we, we adapt it for the different states to make it specific, and now they have hope too. Mm -hmm. 
how did it come about that Rhode Island even took the chance at doing this? Because you have an amazing representative, Justin Price, mm -hmm. right. and he represented it, represented and introduced this bill, uh, this particular one once, but prior to this, there were two bill. There was another bill for geoengineering that he introduced with Representative Karen Macbeth. I believe that she has made a bout for Congress, but I'm not sure. Uh, she She's no longer uh, a delegate, I don't think. Um, but that's the reason, because he, he wanted to know, well, how do we get a good bill? And so what we did was, <clears throat> we called Rosalind Peterson, who's the one of the uh, foremost experts on geoengineering and weather modification and agriculture. Um, unfortunately, Ms. Peterson has recently passed, um, and so we're doing everything that we can to continue her work as we go forward, because what she really wanted uh, was to make sure that there were tough regulations in place and that people had the ability to be part of this conversation and correct the problem. Uh, so we're trying to push her work forward as much as we can. And if you go to the Agriculture Defense Coalition org, that's her site, and it has just tons of good information. And it's all related to agriculture, weather modification, environment. Um, so we're really lucky that Rhode Island uh, got this introduced last March 24th, and it made it through the first committee which was the Natural Resources Committee, Environment and Natural Resources, so it made it through with a thumbs up. Now it's in a special study commission where they're studying the procedures and the regulatory system. Uh, there are five members. Um, I'm not sure if there's three from the House or, uh, I think there's three from the Senate and two from the House, and they're looking at the regulations. So that's happening now, and a part of the work and what we want to do today is invite everyone, encourage everyone to start calling your reps and saying, hey, I found out about this bill and I love it. Are you supporting it? I hope so. And it's H6011. Right now it's under sub A. But you can call your rep right now and, and you can go to our website, Zero Geoengineering, and go to the Take Action. And you can actually send a letter and they give you the number when you get your, your the um, mail back. It says, oh, thanks for sending a letter. Here's where it went. And so uh, basically, we, we tried to put the tools together so that we could uh, just make it easy for people. So now this is in the sub A, and we're hoping to push that through the study commission by just generating support here in Rhode Island. I mean, we really want this bill to pass, and what, what we need to do is just put some pressure from our constituency. And just get your friends to call in because you know you don't really have to do anything. It's done. It just needs people to call in and say, "Hey, we support this. This is great." And that's pretty much what we need to do because what we're doing now is we're counteracting. This is a federal bill that was signed by Trump in April, and it was signed. It's called the Weather Research and Forecasting Innovation Act of 2017. This is the rebranding of geoengineering. This is the way they put it in the budget so no one questions it because they're going to be like, oh, well, the research, that sounds okay, no. right? Oh, that's all right. But then you go and you read it. It's over 100 pages, this document, and then you realize, wait a minute, what are these people doing? Yeah. Sorry, I'm new with the phone. So <laughs> I am not a pro with this thing. What are you doing? What, so what, 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 what would be his motivation in wanting this to happen? Like I, I, the, the way I see Trump, he's sort of trying to unravel a lot of the things that have gone on. Um, I kind of sees through the muck of things, you know. So, yeah, I would say that this probably is. This is something that is deep state. Yeah. This is driven by CIA. Yeah, and that's military. all. It's all the industrial war complex, and he's yeah. pretty much surrendered all that over to his general. That's yeah. What I see. yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. and that's a really good question because, um, again, like this administration is really relaxing the environmental standards and regulations. Yeah, big time. Um, and in addition to the pollution that we're seeing from aviation with mm -hmm. these weather modification programs. We're seeing the ionization process and the unrolling of the wireless technologies, yeah. which is the radiation pollution that's just as bad. Yeah. So I was going to say that um, 
the, the cloud cover, all this solar prevention, uh, radiation prevention. I mean, it could also be because we're highly technological now with microchips and everything that even like a small solar flare would knock out some areas. So I'm just like, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here and say that maybe they're doing it because of corporatism, you know, like just because big corporations have heavily invested into our cell phones that they don't want that to shut off. You know what I mean? I do. I do understand that. And I think it's important that we as a society have to put safety first. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have to, and I'm all for the technology but we can make it safe, and what's, we have no excuse not to do so. No, right. and, and so, um, uh, and, and again, this is like, this is already in the budget. And let me just, let's look through a few of these things, because, you know, you kind of have to look through it. That's a very good question, though. Um, you know, it's a good point, because we, we all love our technology, and I'm all for technology, but again, safety has to come first. Um, so what we're looking at here is just some of the particulars of what they're talking about with this funding. And again, these appropriations are to the tune of billions of dollars through 2020. So it's already spent. It's like he already spent the money. Okay, and these are deep state things, but this is something we're here to correct. So I want everybody to feel optimistic because this can be corrected. It's just like if we don't know what the problem is, we can't fix it. So. Um, you know, you look at this and it says weather, federal weather coordination. And then it has Department of Defense weather forecasting activities. What's Department of oh, Defense yes. weather modification activities or forecasting activities? So again, you have to ask this. And what's important here also is the next rad coverage. And that's our towers and our antenna systems and our wireless communication systems. So when we think about the geoengineering, we have to understand that electromagnetism is central to the technology. I know I keep coming back to that, but it's a, a lot of that has been left out of the discussion. And we all have a phone, and we're all generating electromagnetism. So and we it, have to. It runs the planet, electromagnetism. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, OK, so in this bill, he's talking about research and development and transfer of knowledge, technologies, and applications to the natural National Weather Service and appropriate agencies and entities, including the United States Weather Industries and academic partners. Okay, um, so that would be our Harvard, our Stanford, all these, this is where the financing is coming. So it's, it's all financed, it's all coordinated. How old is it going to have graduation outside? <laughs> <laughs> um, it goes to, uh, we're talking about. Um, advanced radar, radar networking technologies, and other ground-based technologies, including those emphasizing rapid fine-scale sensing of the boundary layer and lower troposphere, and the use of innovative dual polarization phased array technology. Mm -hmm. Again, that's very important because that's pulse-modulated pulse radiation coming out of radar there's no scientific deployment. They're just putting one here, putting one here, putting one here. Okay, so we have to, what we're doing is we're just assessing this and we're taking an accounting for the weather modification infrastructure in each state. And that's how we measure is through the um, testing with the rain and then our testing with the um, electromagnetism. We're going to get to that. Um, but basically this, here's, you know, they're not going to say they're spraying aerosols, but they do say atmospheric chemistry and interactions essential to accurately characterizing atmospheric composition and predicting meteorological processes. So there's your atmospheric chemistry. Um, and again, this is all intervention. What they're saying is, well, Mother Nature didn't get it right. <laughs> we need to fix it. Oh, yeah, right. You know, just like with our GMOs. Well, this we need to fix the food. There's a real problem here. You know, so we need to engineer it. So that's kind of the mindset with this. Um, and so here is the, the, weather, the budget for the year. This is the 2018 budget and, um, and coordination. There's over $3 billion in this particular budget for federal weather. Okay, and then what's really important here is that they're relaxing the environmental standards. <laughs> yeah. 
to, to give be play the devil's advocate one more time is uh, sure. I think uh, Trump would probably just like think of what he might be thinking is that to catch up with, with the industry standards of like maybe like China, which have been polluting for a while, and then he's probably trying to match them. You know what I mean? Like he's Well, the thing about it is the atmosphere and the environment is not for one man or individual oh, of to decide. And that's why there has to be a strong regulatory system put in place. So I really, what Trump thinks or what he might do, or what, the most important thing is our air mm -hmm. and our yeah. environment. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is put that number one and make sure that we get regulations in place so that we're all protected. Because right now, there's no protections. So if he's trying to keep up with China, guess what? He's not doing a good job because China has actually standards way lower than ours, like hundreds of times or thousands of times lower oh, than sure. ours for the electromagnetism. So yeah. you've got Russia, you got China, you got these other nations that have a lower standard. Okay, where do we get our iPhones at? China. 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 Where do we hold them? Next to right hub. How much radiation do those things pump out? Right. Okay, so it's a weapon. And we have to understand that we have to be in control of the technology and really just get educated on it and so that we can be safe and correct it. So um, in Russia, their cell phones don't pump out as much as ours? Well, actually, I think their cell phones do, but they've made it so you can't have them in schools. They don't have wireless in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't advertise to children. You can't sell these things to children. Wow. Okay, they've discovered that it causes infertility. Yeah. Okay, how many young kids do you know that have a phone or that have a laptop? They're sitting the laptop on their lap. I don't know. Okay, fertility is up in this country. Uh, with teens. The problem. The problem <laughs> is that the radiation kills sperm, and right. we know that more than any other test, we know for sure that the infertility is a problem with the electromagnetism, and that's taking out future generations. When I when I spoke to Anne Louise Geltman, Gettleman, who did that book Zapped about just, just the 5G stuff, the 5G and all this other yeah. She said if you're trying to conceive, she said stay, stay 13 feet away from somebody on a cell phone. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, oh wow. Yeah. Well, well, well Putin, heavy. Wow. Putin's whole deal is oh, that really he's, he's trying to grow the population in Russia. He wants the country to be strong. He wants the people <laughs> to be outside healthy. Of windows. <laughs> so, you know, GMOs are banned. It's all banned. You know, so, totally, yeah. 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 they know the deal. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, I mean, so it's just an education process where once we get familiar, we understand the science, then it's an easy fix. Okay, we're problem solution. We're just always looking for the solution. And what I've just been trying to show and point out is just the mountains of information here that we have with the facts. So if we just stick with the science and stick with and help other people, like, comprehend what these programs are, then the public can have more of a central role. And that's what has to happen in a free society because we can't have solar radiation management and be free. It's impossible. It's a prison. Okay, so uh, this one was from um, Harvard, David Keith. Um, and this is talking about solid aerosols. Why don't we take a quick break over to this video and we can hear David Keith explain it himself. To do a geoengineering program, and you could say, uh, uh, well, no, I think we will send about a million tons a year. So you might end up killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. I made a decision, or it was a collective decision, to do a geoengineering program, and you could say, uh, uh, the kind of, well, no, I think we will send about a million tons a year. So you might end up killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. In 2018, scientists will take bold steps to explore a technology that could reverse the effects of climate change. It's an engineering project that would literally touch every living thing on the planet. They're looking at ways to reflect sunlight back into space and cool down the Earth. Geoengineering is the pioneering science that could well be on everyone's lips in 2018. <laughs> the idea of geoengineering is the idea that humans purposefully influence the climate of the planet. 
solar geoengineering specifically is the idea of introducing a substance into the stratosphere that will cool down the planet by reflecting back sunlight. And if we turn down the sun a little bit, that brings the Earth's energy more into balance, and that could reduce some of the risks, like extreme storms or extreme temperatures. Exactly. Okay, so what do we so do? The other thing is horrifying, is that you could actually spray sulfuric acid in the stratosphere, 20 kilometers over our head, and use that to stop the planet warming up. And oh, wait, you, you, tech fix. You, could, you could spray something into the atmosphere to shame. Okay, spray okay. pollution into the atmosphere to stop it warming. I made a decision, or there was a collective decision, to do a geoengineering program. And you put, say, uh, the kind of program I think makes more sense, but about a million tons a year. But so, you might end up killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. So basically, uh, no one really says it better than him, um, but that's what we're dealing with. We have um, a group of scientists that have a theory and some ideas about the planet, and they're just doing experiments. And so what we're doing is we're focusing on Rhode Island and what we're going to do here to make sure that there's regulation. So you can do your science experiments, but keep it in the lab. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have emissions that we do with our cars and our automobiles, I mean, imagine if we didn't have a regulation system for that. Well, then no one would have to get insurance, no one would have to get their car, you know, fixed to make sure that it was meeting the standard, you know, you wouldn't have to know if they were a good driver. Okay, so, yes? Um, but I thought when Trump first came into office, he put the EPA out of business. I thought we didn't have an EPA anymore. No, well, he, he hired somebody that, uh, what, pretty much against it. Yeah, the EPA, and that's yeah, a really good point. Better. What we have now, and what they've done, and I'm glad you brought this up, is they have relaxed the standards even more, okay. so that now they're not even looking at right. any of this pollution. And this is, again, why what we have going in Rhode Island is really the only hope that we have right now in terms of something tangible that I can take into, um, like for example, I'll be having meetings in Pennsylvania this week, and we've met with uh, senators in New York. And again, so we're taking them this legislation and saying, hey, we need to be um, cutting these emissions. Right. Okay, and so, yeah, I mean, that's what we're fighting. That's exactly what we're fighting, because there are no standards. And that's yeah, but who point. regulates the regulators? That's the problem. That's what we're here to do is set the law in place. <laughs> I mean, that's why the, the, oops, the defense of, of <laughs> Trump, we've got billions of dollars being wasted with all these government employees, and half of them are just a revolving door to industry. So yeah. what is what are they really doing? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, see, that's the thing, and why we can't we can't depend on the regulatory agencies. We've got to come through with this law. And see, once we have this law enacting in in, in Rhode Island, once the law is enacted, then there will be penalties provided. And those penalties are $500,000 and 190-day jail time per violation. That means there's going to be a whole uh, system set up so that there's going to be bounty hunters to find out who's doing the cloud seeding, right? Okay, and there's going to be a whole system in place of regulations like we have in the auto industry where you can't just go and pollute, and if you do, you get fined. Okay, so we're trying to put something out there. It's definitely, you know, it's not perfect, and that's why we need many people to chime in and get involved, because this is self-governance. Yeah. The geoengineering issue is the global governance issue, and unless the United States shows up, we're going to get what China as you up, and Russia, they already do weather modification. They're not going to ask their citizens if they want it or not. Right. They don't care. But here... We have a unique opportunity because we can flip this thing around, install regulations, and then start generating income for the state by finding polluters. So then we've done two things. We have stopped pollution, stopped uh, the generators of pollution, and we've started um, cleaning it up and putting a regulation system so we can get people working. And so we're, we're doing two things, generating money and getting rid of pollution. Uh, everybody's talking about Trump, but I, I know that this is not just yeah, right. This is going back many, yeah, many, many, yeah, 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 many presidents. presidents. So that's I, believe, that's, I believe Obama was pretty hardcore. That's this. a good point. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Rachel. I'm, I'm going to scoot through here and get over to that because we do. This is the Rutgers stratospheric aerosols. Yeah. 
This is another university paper, sulfur geoengineering, injecting sulfur dioxide. This is another university paper, efficient formation of stratospheric aerosols for climate engineering by emission of condensable vapor from aircraft. And then um, how would we put more S into the atmosphere? This is from um, Rutgers. You know, they have all kinds of ways for airplanes to do this. So this is Rutgers money at work. Okay, this is, again, this is the tower infrastructure that, that we're going to start with. But keep these in mind when you go and you're looking around. These towers are not just cell towers. Um, and then here is, this is from the United Arab Emirates, okay? And I'm going to show uh, these towers again. Ionizers produce charged particles into the desert air, okay? So what happens is the clouds get seeded, okay? The sky gets seeded. The towers charge them with a particular charge, and then they're be able to be manipulated by different radar infrastructure that we have. It's very intricate. And then, you know, this is from Saudi Arabia. Here's the black rain that comes down. Oh, shit. Hmm. Okay? They don't care. Okay? But we have regulations that we should have. And then, you know, maybe the people there will say, oh, when you see black rain, that's acid rain. Oh, oh okay. And, and, and see, you know, again, this is like Mother Nature didn't get it right. So we need to do climate engineering. And here's how we make rain. Okay? Yeah, so that's... You know, um, I just can't believe it. Uh, but that's this is from Saudi Arabia. That's that one. Um, Would you say it could be ir irreversible at some point? I mean, like, or if I it's don't not irreversible? No, I think that the, yeah. the nature of the Earth is regenerative. Yeah. And that once we stop, it's like the person, mm -hmm. one person cleaning and the other person making a mess. Right. right. You know, you can never get yeah, it cleaned yeah. up. So you have to get the one person to stop making the mess, and then we can clean it up. Because right. Um, right now they're saying, oh yeah, we should just add millions of tons. Of pollution in the atmosphere to block the sun. And they're hoping that no one questions them on the science and says, well, hey, you know, what goes up comes down, right? How about coal ash or putting coal ash out there? I yes. Mean, we're, we're breathing in mercury? It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And there's no regulations, they're just doing an experiment. Um, this is important. This is weather modification and um, the vapor generator because a lot of people like to blame everything on the coal plants and fossil fuels. Well, look, it turns out that this is part of carbon sequestration. They want to blame it on fossil fuels, but wait a minute, it's weather modification. They have to add water vapor into the atmosphere so that they have something to work with. So they add more water vapor and more pollution, and so that's how we get more cloud material. And again, this is your man-made weather. That's how they do it. Um, this is a picture that has the tower next to the... Oh, yeah, that's the one in a couple of these. Yeah, I have another picture that shows this because I've been, we've been just kind of um, assessing and documenting the infrastructure in each state. Yeah. So we look at the towers, photograph them, and we take readings. Um, this is a paper, um, actually this is from um, a half century of earth system experimentation, geoengineering. This is 61 pages of, um, of a report, and it talks about where geoengineering happened, who financed it, what university was involved. So it's very, very involved and complicated. Um, who? Who's doing it? Federal, international, and NGOs are discussing and determining geoengineering liability and global governance without the consent of Rhode Island residents and their elected representatives. Currently important decisions about cloud seeding, weather modification, geoengineering, global governance are made in private international forums that are closed to the public. And that's your Carnegie, your Bill Gates, and these are some of the big sponsors. They're international. Okay, so they're pushing it. They're really pushing it. And the federal and international organizations, that's about. Oh, okay. What's that land, land the I think that's a, um, it might be a German company. Um, they're supporting this? These are the, these oh, are the people just, that fund it. They're just it. aviation. They, they're just they, using they, a bird. They, they finance all these. are like the companies that are financing. Yeah, yeah. I just um, wondered their logo. Yeah, um, this is, um, a, okay, so the um, representative in Maryland that I'm working with was very, very concerned about this aspect. And see, what's happening is, since the United States hasn't shown up, or our leadership hasn't shown up for the discussion, the discussion of geoengineering is happening internationally, especially with stratospheric aerosol injections, which is SAI, 
It's injecting sulfur into the atmosphere. And what they say is that um, this, study, this study assesses if and to what extent uh, existing international rules on liability could be applicable to SAI damage. Apart from the assessment of the rules on state responsibility, the question whether states can generally be held internationally liable for damage arising from lawful activities is addressed. So what they're saying is you could have, we could be liable for these programs that we don't know about internationally. Okay? That's why we have to show up at the state over here in Rhode Island and say, hello, we want to stop this right now, okay? We don't want any part of it. Okay, so I'm going to get to what Rachel was uh, pointing to. Um, this is um, from 1966, though. So we have to know that this, this started a while ago. This is from 1966, a recommended national program in weather modification. So they were talking about it, and they had programs there. Um, this is from the Vietnam veterans, um, and they talked about in this newsletter how they were using um, lead iodide, silver iodide, and Agent Orange. And so if you look here, then you can see their cloud seeding programs. Oh, wow. And this timing is important because President Kennedy was trying to stop the atmospheric testing. This technically classifies as testing. Okay, and so what happened is after our President Kennedy was executed publicly, the next administration started weather modification in the United States. Four states showed up and had a ban on cloud seeding. Those were Maryland, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Illinois. Okay, so they actually had a ban on cloud seeding in 1965, 66, 67. These bills all expired. Okay, because what happened was it moved from the Department of Agriculture over the Department of Defense. And oh. then we never saw it again, oh. right? I mean, we never, you know, there was no way to catch up with it then, and that's kind of where we are now. Um, we're trying to catch up. So, um, so this is the Vietnam era, and the, the, uh, it was Operation Popeye. And then um, weather modification in North Vietnam and Laos foreign relations of the United States. Now this is interesting, and this is how they played it for all these decades. Recently approved cloud seeding techniques would be applied on a sustained basis in a non-publicized effort to induce continued rainfall through the months of the normal dry season. They didn't ask permission, they just went to Vietnam, started doing this stuff, and then they just it turned it into a business. Oh yeah, that sounds good, let's do it. Let's do it at home, too. Um, it was in Pennsylvania that one of the first laws was passed with the intent of curbing possible harm to nature by changing the weather. In discussing the bill, which became the 1967 Pennsylvania law, one of the sponsors in the House of Representatives stated, cloud seeding involves silver iodide, and silver iodide, Mr. Speaker, is highly poisonous. AGI used in seeding falls everywhere, on trees, in vegetation, roofs, people, and in its synergistic action joins with motor exhaust to become lead iodide. So that's why uh, they did that in Pennsylvania. And that's what we're able to show them along with the bill. Now when we go and we um, speak with these members, we're able to show them, hey, you had this bill back in 1967. You could reestablish these uh, rules. And I, I have a good feeling about Pennsylvania. We have some strong advocacy there. Oh, and then so, sorry, um, okay, so down here. So Rachel was mentioning how it was the Obama administration, um, they also had weather modification programs. And you gotta keep in mind, all this stuff has been rebranded over the years to make sure nobody catches on. So one day it's weather modification, the next mitigation. So this is Weather Mitigation Research and Development Pol Policy Authorization Act of 2009. Now in this report, it talks about specifically, if you are getting a paycheck from the United States government, then you need to comply with the wishes of this bill. It's basically paraphrasing that, but basically, you better not say anything. So that's why people are like, well, why aren't they saying anything? Well, 
they want their paycheck, they better just be quiet. So that's what they do. So this was in 2009. This was 2010, Obama. Okay, a coordinated strategy could focus federal geoengineering research and inform governance efforts. So that's 2010. This is 2013. No, this is also 2010. Engineering the climate, research needs and strategies for international cooperation. That's Obama. And then this is geoengineering parts one, two, and three. Now at this hearing, at the Committee on Science and Technology at the House of Representatives, they had hearings in 2009 and 2010. No members of the public were invited. No one from any of the agencies were invited or any human health agencies. But they were working with the UK Parliament and they were developing geoengineering governance. Okay, and so this is what we're talking about. The federal government's doing one thing and the states have no idea what they're doing. And yet, we're finding all of the rain samples with geoengineering footprints. And so why is state legislation for geoengineering regulation and, prohibit and prohibition necessary? Geoengineering activities generate toxic air pollution and sulfur emissions that cause health problems that threaten people, especially children, bees, wildlife, and all of nature. Sounds like eugenics. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right on track there. I think you are because, again, um, this is something that, you know, if you can't avoid it, you know, uh, you can't be a free person and be geoengineered. And so, yeah, that whole idea of the, you know, there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different issues related to that. And that is an important um, point. And so how? The establishment of Rhode Island state procedures to regulate, license, or prohibit the intentional manipulation of the global environment through geoengineering. And that's what we are hoping to do and we're pushing for here in Rhode Island um, to support Representative Price's bill. Hopefully we get a couple more um, members excited about it. He said that he is feeling, you know, that it is being supported. And they wouldn't have moved this to a commission if they didn't want it to pass. Okay, so they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have gotten this far. But now what it needs really is just people calling in and saying, hey, I know we have this Geoengineering Act and I want it to pass. What do we have to do? And just get on your member and let them know that this is something that matters to you because really Rep Price has done um, everything he can um, and now what he needs is our help. So we did set up this website um, to support Rep Price in, his, um, in this bill uh, because we wanted to get a site that had just the documents and the materials and like no hype or anything just so people could research and so if you go to the site you can research we have university papers we have patents we have lab tests um, but most important we have this do-it-yourself right to your legislator and you can just write in you get the number back of who you who your rep is and what their email is and you can follow up with them and um, Basically, we just need to push this bill and get it passed. Well, the commission reports back in April. That's what the sub part said. Okay, so so right now I think what they're doing is just choosing members. And so right now what we can be doing is calling in and just mm -hmm. voicing our support. You know, your representative, you know, likes to hear from their constituency, especially if there's a bill, and especially something so powerful. Because if Rhode Island, if this thing gets passed in Rhode Island, the earth will shake. There will be shock waves around the world. When you were on the radio show on Shadow Citizen, were you not talking about the fact that if Rhode Island passes this bill, we could actually sue the other states? Okay. Or, or, or hold other states accountable okay. for their geoengineering and how it affects us? Mm -hmm. I think well, that? that would be the, the starting point. Um, um, we'd be able to hold the, the airplane or the, the pilots, right? Yeah, I mean, it would it would work like it does now with our car emissions. You know, you you would have a whole system set up right now for some reason. We don't have a consistent regulation system for the emissions. 
So we'll be setting up a whole new infrastructure for more jobs in Rhode Island so that we can get this under control and stop this pollution, generate money for the state. I mean, it really could be so that we could hold people accountable, I hope, like David Keith, Ken right, Caldera. Right. Bill Gates has put millions of dollars of his own money into geoengineering. Really? Yeah, millions and millions of dollars of his own funds. And so, you know, this is just something that, you know, and, and that's with the GMOs too, because there is a patent, you know, for GMO aluminum resistant seed, you might be aware of. Huh. Now, how would they know that they were going to need an aluminum resistant seed? That's called owning the market. You just destroy your competition, you destroy your organics. Do you know Walmart has a patent for the Robo Bee? The uh, role oh, will be. Oh yeah, they're okay. Yeah. So this is this That's is where we are. That is frightening. Yeah, that is. And they, this they've is, been working on perfecting it. Now they've got it supposedly perfected. This is where we're at. It's either us or technology. I mean, we have to be the owners of technology, or it's going to destroy us. Yeah. Yeah. And so if we get in there, because I, th you know, we, I thought Rachel had a great way of putting it. You know, we can stay addicted to our internet 24/7, but let's just hardwire it. Let's, right. let's be safe with it, you know, let's put our devices, uh, let's get those grounded and plug those in. And let's just be mindful about it. Um, because the next part of this, uh, what I wanted to show you guys, is the electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. And that's a really big part of this because what we're doing now is we are looking at the fields created because that's, that is ionizing the atmosphere. And so what we're doing is we're going from state to state and just studying uh, what, what the infrastructure is and trying to um, just get an assessment. So we drove around today um, and we took over 50, I think, um, yeah, I think we did, like over 50 readings. And they were all, and I'm going to show you this thing. I guess I should turn on the, turn on this light so I can show you guys this. The light. Yes, please. Okay. Um, yeah, she and I okay. drove around today. Yeah. Okay, so here's the. So remember these um, these towers. Okay. That's okay. No, it's okay. I think that's fine. That's good. Okay. This is an acoustometer, and this is what we're using to measure the electromagnetic fields. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. Okay. Now. Keep in mind there's been no scientific deployment of all of this new technology. So what we're dealing with is a soup of electrosmog. Now on the right side is our peak signal. On the left side is the average. Now this is based on the bioinitiative report. Right now in this room it's showing that we're about at 1.22. Okay, which is not so bad. Okay. Now, our DNA feels that. Okay, yeah. How annoying is that? Our DNA feels that. Okay, so we're actually being assaulted right now. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why we have to learn how to be mindful and practice safe tech with our technology. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of things we can do. Okay, the first thing we can do with our phone is put it on airplane mode when we're not using it. Okay, and if you haven't read the fine print, it says... Do not put this thing within an inch of your body. Okay, how many of us carry the phone in our pocket, oh, yeah. put it in our jacket? Okay, we need to start telling our loved ones, hey guys, you need to know this, set your phone over here. At night, power it off. What does the airplane mode do? What it just the stops the phone from communicating with the tower. Because what the phone is doing is like, hey, are you there? And the tower's like, yeah, I'm here. And they're doing that like yeah, constantly, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Okay. And you don't need that. You can just have it on airplane mode and just download whatever you want, and then you're not irradiating yourself. Okay? Um, other things you can do are um, just power it off when you're not using it. Um, text instead of talk on the phone. Use speakerphone if you have to use the phone. Um, just start talking about it and telling people, hey, did you know that you know this is kind of harmful? Because what they're saying is electromagnetism is a carcinogen. We know that over time it causes harm. Mm -hmm. How bad is uh, Bluetooth? That well, we would have to measure it, but it's the same thing. It's the wireless. You're going right. to want to be mindful of that, and just be careful. If you have your, you know, your technology in your sleeping area, you want to make sure to move that. And really, the nighttime is when you have to have the best rest. 
So you, you don't realize it, but the smart meters and this type of technology is really interfering with our biology. And that's why we're going on offense to shut that stuff down and say, hey, wait a minute, you're a utility company. You can't come over to my house and irradiate us. Yes? Well, I, I have a little problem with that because we've been we're, we're irradiated with electromagnetic radiation all the time and have been long before cell phones. But we have, this is just a much higher frequency. Yes. But amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, we've been bombarded with those things for decades. We have, and what have been the consequences? Much higher rate of cancer, right. much higher rate of neurological problems. I'm for technology. But I'm just saying we have to learn how to ground this or we have to be able to transpose it so that it's not harmful. Because I think that we can, we just have to really assess what's going on because there's no agency that's like looking out for what's happening now. And what I'm saying is no one's protected from the long-term effects of non-ionizing radiation. And over time, it's the rate of exposure that's the, that's the important part. So we just want to get into that conversation because we want to find out, well, what is, the, what is being generated? Let's measure it, and then let's find out how we can transpose it, if it's possible. Because if we don't, then future generations are going to have to deal with this environmental soup mess. And we want to make it easier and make the world safe for them and clean. And mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a really good question, though. You, you brought up a good point about the Romans and lead pipes. Right, yeah, I mean, this is the thing of the technology. The Romans, uh, they had the lead pipes, right? And they were like, this is great, everybody. We can get our water. This is fantastic. But wait a minute. They all got um, poisoned from the lead and died, and they first became infertile. They didn't know, though. They didn't yeah. know. They just we did know. That. Well, we don't we know. We do, but not yeah, everybody we, knows. We know there's too many, yeah. We don't really know because, like, we were driving around today, and you would be surprised at the level coming out of these towers. And so, this is part of our geoengineering act because we're we might not be able to talk, stop the towers, but we sure can stop those emissions. Right. You can't just pollute. That's still radiation emissions coming out of that tower. So that's how we're going to pinpoint and nail them down. Mm -hmm. These are the same frequency range. Okay, that's a really good question. The newest science says that it's probably close to zero, if at all, because it's never been determined a safe rate. And, and, and with our technology now, for example, with the 5G, there has been not a single study to prove that it's safe, not one. So again, we're kind of putting technology first and safety second. And what we need to do is put safety first and put technology second. And then we can have it all day. We can have our... our uh, all the things that we enjoy, but we'll just be making our safety and health a priority. So yeah, I, I really just want to thank everyone for coming, and um, I want to answer any questions if I can. Sure. Yes. Well, um, I'm kind of new to this geoengineering arena, uh, but uh, I, uh, I got interested in it when I was talking with, with a friend of mine who actually went to a seminar very similar to this, a home very similar to this. He was retired military. And um, we talk about stuff because he knows I like to think about things. And so one of the things that he mentioned is that this retired general was talking about engineering. And uh, he was talking about the aluminum resistant seed. seed. And he also had mentioned the correlation between the ending of above ground nuclear testing and the beginning of geoengineering and cloud seeding. Mm -hmm. And he said he started almost at the same time. And he says that that's not by coincidence. He said, and what he had suggested, uh, just to make a, just a short bit, sure. is that when we started exploding hydrogen bombs, uh, and he specifically mentioned the, uh, the Tsar Baba that the Russians exploded in the, in the Arctic, and the uh, Bikini Atoll bomb that we exploded, we did something. We messed it up, and the and, the, and I would presume because of the liability, the government's not telling us, and that's when they started the cloud seeding. So that was a very interesting mystery, and that's what that's what kind of triggered it a little bit. Um, do you do you see a correlation between uh, above ground nuclear testing and geoengineering? 
Yeah, I think that that's a really interesting point because it's both very destructive kinds of technologies. And what it reminds me of a, is a paper that was written in 1966, I believe, and it was by Gordon MacDonald, and it's, it was about, it was called Unless Peace Comes. And in that he wrote um, How to Wreck the Environment. Mm -hmm. And in that he stated about nuclear testing, and then he also talked about the weather intervention and how to induce different types of problems. And, and, and it was using weather as a weapon of war. And what they were saying is they were going to be able to phase out the nuclear and go straight to the weather modification because Nobody's you can see. Who would know? Oh, right. I didn't do that rainstorm. Oh, I didn't do that earthquake. It yeah. wasn't me. Plausible deniability. You wouldn't be able to nail them down. Okay. You know? And one more question in regards to this. Um, I heard the word eugenics come up. Is there a correlation, do you think, between population control and geoengineering? Okay, well, I, I try to stay away from my opinion, but what I would look at with the facts is that there is definitely money being put in geoengineering, <coughs> money being invested in vaccines, money being invested in GMOs, lots of things that are known to be harmful. Um, so I think we are looking at a time where we do have to challenge and oppose these kinds of industries. Because, yeah, the eugenics aspect, these are all things that are harmful to biology and harmful to life. So uh, is, there, is there a connection? I don't know. But, you know, with financing, you've got your Bill Gates, and he did go from geoengineering to vaccines, and to GMOs. And he's so, an advocate of population control. And he oh, is yeah. an ab advocate of population control, so yes, I guess so. And for the greater good. I think um, for their their mecha takeover, I call it, to like yes. of uh, AI, that they're gonna need some sort of Faraday cage for that to happen. This is what they're doing for the Earth. Like they're Faraday. They are preventing solar flares, natural waves of uh, solar right. activity. But like, but it's uh, keeping it in. Right. Well, that's another thing. Is like we gotta protect ourselves from the, these people that are doing it too. So I almost feel like we need the Faraday cage ourselves. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I, I was gonna bring up a, like what is the solution that we can do without promoting marketing right now? But like, what can we do? Like uh, iodine or what it prevents us uh, repels? Yeah, yeah. Repels there's, there's badges or yeah. How there's do we different detox kinds of so? things. Yeah, that's a really good question because detox. There's a lot of people that have the detox uh, regimen down, and it's different from everybody. I, I know some stuff. people do the, the uh, baths, mm -hmm. do the Epsom salt baths. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and um, I would I would talk to your health professional. Well, I mean, oh, it's hard well, to convince them yeah. on this unless they came here tonight. A natural path. A natural path that can help you right detox. Because yeah. I would say individually, everyone's different. And you want to make sure that you're getting your nutrition and detoxing the me metals. So you'd, it would have to be a natural path um, on that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's a really important angle. And what can we do? I think this bill, and this is why I've stopped sure. my life and, and stopped everything, because when we take down those towers, and we will, they're not, we're not gonna have a smart meter problem, and we're not gonna have an AI problem. And we're gonna put all of this technology in the ground where it's safe, mm -hmm. and where we can offer future generations an infrastructure that's gonna be <coughs> remarkable and beautiful. Right. Right. And it's gonna see feature the trees, and the beauty of the earth and get all this stuff in the Well, the smart meters dependent upon towers? Well, it's all talking. They're all talking so to it's, each it's other. This is where the AI structure. The ionized, mm -hmm. the, the whole. It's the whole yeah. soup. It's the whole yeah. technology works together. So when we look at one tower, we're looking at a grid of towers across the United States. We can't just look at one tower, see, because they're all working together with something called NEXRAD. Okay, so that's why we're going after the electromagnetism as an air contaminant with our bill. Oh, and we're going to say, listen, this is going to be a nightmare for anyone that's going to plan to pollute in Rhode Island. So it's coming from satellites being received by towers and then coming out to the small cells. Yeah, we have a whole it's infrastructure. So it's different. Yes, yeah. we have space based energy systems, we have the infrastructure of the towers, and then yes, we have the I smart have meters everywhere. In California, the fires were really, it was much worse because the smart meters are connected to every single house. Mm -hmm. 
in Northern California. Oh, in Northern yeah. and Southern California. Oh, you think they so have, Southern too? Well, there's a lot going on. I but think the fact that, that we have more smart the, meters. The incendiaries on the ground and they engineered the drought and just boom. Because well, right theory. after that, the rains came. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's our engineered climate. I mean, and there's just more rains how today. How the smart meters created? Did, did they? The, when when they, they they're all connected, fires. so when they catch fire, mm -hmm. it's all going to be one fire. Yeah. You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Those one it's more. like electricity. Okay. That's a much okay. more intense fire, hotter. Um, and in fact, Spreads there was, the there was uh, paint Girl. melted off of cars. Uh, okay, now here's the interesting, is interesting thing. You saw a car, uh, you may have seen this photo, the paint's all melted off. Yeah. But next to it, there's some plants that have all the right. 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 They were the wired. The garbage bins right. are just sitting right. there. The, what was yeah. not wired? It was okay. Yeah. There, yeah. Were, there were many incidents of just like one area being hit, so they thought they were like directed energy weapons. I wouldn't rule that out, but yeah, I wouldn't rule that out. I think so. I, I had talked to uh, the president of Barlow Air, Air, Air Filtration Systems. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like the top. He's the president of sales uh, of the company, and he was saying that the next biggest technology is uh, nanotech. Mm, yes. And this, I think, has a lot to do with it because... You guys all have to read my next book. That's in my next book. <laughs> oh, cool. I can get you in touch with the guy, too. Uh, oh, um, it's all right. That chapter. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> is that he, um, he was saying, because, you know, because um, he does inf uh, air filtration systems, that he's basically preventing toxins from outside getting into buildings and all that jazz, right? So it's basically protecting the people he can't like the, that are buying his product mm -hmm. and uh, that eventually that I this is my little theory about it all is that they're spreading all these heavy metals and uh, everywhere that nanotechnology is going to eventually use one day uh, mm -hmm. along with the AI systems to repair and then they're going to come out with like the smart bloods and a lot all that stuff so like this is all like long term this isn't like just with just with weather particularly this is like Absolutely. all kinds of infiltration of our systems so and that's a really good point, especially with the nanotechnology. And it's all related to this science discussion, because what's happened is science has just gone whoosh, yeah. without us. Yeah. And there's yeah. been no ethical dis discussion. There's been no general public discussion. And the nanotechnology is really important, because they are using it in the geoengineering. They have said with the aluminum that they're using nano aluminum because it stays in the atmosphere much longer. Um, and so. Um, again, we have to have the discussion of what are the environmental and public health impacts of this. Has it, the question has never even come up, you know, and you have other things with DNA, for example, um, where they're being able to splice DNA and create a daughterless mouse. Oh, that's okay? gross. So see, the science is just, I know that it's not the best topic and most interesting no, thing to everyone, but we really, as a society, and especially as Americans, we need to start learning yeah. about science and tuning in a little bit more mm -hmm. to the science. Okay, just a 10 minute warning. Oh, Thank okay. You. Thank you very much. So you're, you're not advocating eliminating communication systems. What you're no. advocating is putting it underground yeah. and hardwiring it. Yes, exactly. All I want is for it to be safe. And there's no excuse not to do it because we can, we can have all the technology that we have now and we can make it safe. You know, so the fact that we'll, well how do you get rid of all the stuff that's already here, all these transpose it. It's in our bodies. Well, we have to detox. detox. Again, once we get rid of these yeah, towers, it's biologics too. It's not just metals. There, yeah, there's a lot. Like it's a process. But once we get rid of the pollution generating infrastructure, which is our aviation and these towers, yeah. and this, we are going to feel so much better. Or just I mean, honestly. The garbage, you can clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, I've already got three different ideas yeah. for businesses. Like, for instance, in libraries, stuff. you have the, yeah. your phone yeah. just plugged yeah. right into the, you know? the table to get the internet yeah. instead of the wireless. You just yeah. sit at a table um, and plug in. I'm going to be investing in canned air after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then putting in landlines into houses that ripped it all out. That's my other company I want to start. We put the landline back in. Like, like oh, you were saying, like, so I think one of the reasons why they got rid of lead paint, not that, I mean. Yeah, right, because they knew they were going to be introducing this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it can be very, <laughs> it can be useful better, if they, like, coat the other side of your drywall. Right, like with lead paint, and then the other side you can design with whatever I don't know toxic emitting paint you want to use. <laughs> <laughs>
No, it's mostly, wasn't it eating it, the chips and the Yeah, sure. I mean, that's what they told us. They can use excuses all day. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That was great. Thank you. I appreciate it. And um, anyone who wants to get in touch with me, please come to the website. Um, either one of them, Zero Geoengineering or Zero 5G.